Thank you, band, worship team. Thank you for leading us in worship. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for this day that you have made, God. We don't take it lightly or for granted. God, we thank you for an opportunity to worship your holy name. Holy Spirit, have your way in this space. God, have your way in me. Speak like only you can speak. You be glorified. Touch those who are watching this. Let them hear you, not me. Let us continue to lean in your great idea, the power of community. We honor you today. We bless your holy name. It's in your son Jesus' name. Y'all, today I'm so excited because we are completing um, this preaching series entitled The Power of Community. We will officially close out this series at our Bible study this coming Wednesday on our Facebook Transforming Group page. So go ahead and uh, go there on Wednesday at 8 p.m. So thankful for our ministerial team who has been leading us and in, in preaching and teaching on this series, The Power of Community. Haven't you been blessed? So excited that we officially launched our small groups this week with a record number of people, over 50 people signed up for our small groups, which are simply an intentional and outward expression of community. Remember, community is God's idea from the very beginning of creation. See, we were made for community. God's desire for us is to live intentionally in community with others. See, the dictionary gives us this definition. It's simply a group of people living in the same place or space and having a particular characteristic in common. Or it's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of a shared common attitude, interest, or goals. See, living in community gives you power in three distinct ways. I'll talk about this as we opened up this series in Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 45. It shows us that living in community has the power to grow you, number one, spiritually. That's verse 42. It has the power to grow you relationally. That's verse 44. And it has the power to grow you, grow our community. That's verse 45. See, today we'll focus on that last point a little bit, and it, and it simply shows how living in community, the small C, can impact the, in a powerful way the community with the big C at large. See, living in community is a powerful way to grow our community. In Acts chapter 2, verse 45, it says, And they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. See, our first lady gave us a definition of Christian community. She says it's an intentional commitment to doing life with other believers that surpasses the surface and helps us to move in maturity in Christ. See, there's power in community. And that power comes from being one. See, the title of today's message in concert with the series title is simply this. The power of one. We'll be focusing on two uh, uh, books, two chapters, Genesis chapter 11 and John chapter 17. So get your Bibles ready, get them handy. We'll be leaning into that in a little bit. See, we began this series going all the way back to the first case of community and creation. God created Adam, but Adam didn't have anything or anyone comparable to him. So God gave Adam a companion, Eve, because God said, it wasn't good that man should be alone. God said, I will give you someone comparable to you. And the fact of the matter is that when the two came together, they were stronger. They were better. When I said, I do to Robin Simpson, now Robin May, I was immediately better and stronger. And even in the creation story, God shows us that living in isolation outside of community is not a good thing. See, in Genesis, after he created the earth and Adam, for the first time in God's creation, he said something was not good. In all his creation, after he made it, he looked at it and saw that it was good. As a matter of fact, at the end of Genesis chapter 1, it says this, Then God saw everything 
that he made, and indeed, it was very good. After he created the earth, the grass, the seed, the fruit, the light, the waters, the animals of the sea, the land and air. After he made man, he looked at it all and said it was good. But then he looked at man. He looked at Adam and said it was good. But then he realized that the situation of Adam was not good. See, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says this. The Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. This is the very beginning of our understanding of community. See, Adam needed something beyond just himself to fully walk in the power and authority that God desired for him to walk in. See, when Adam, when, when God pulled from Adam's side, his rib, and created Eve, Adam immediately knew that, that he was better, that he was stronger. He said in Genesis 2 and 23, he said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Adam was immediately better. He was stronger because he now had a companion. His community was growing. There was power in community. And we see that as Adam and Eve knew each other, their family began to grow. They had children and their children had children and their children's children had children. And before you know it, they began to populate the earth. They began to, to grow the earth in population. And until we get to this unique place in history, in Genesis chapter 11, the people of the earth, the descendants of Adam and Eve really began to understand the power of community. See, they didn't talk about it in those terms, but they understood the power that they had when they came together. They began to understand that when they came together for a common goal, that they were powerful beyond imagination. They realized that they were literally unstoppable when they operated as one. See, in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, it says this, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. See, this seems to be a preamble to the power that they would project throughout their plans that will be coming forward. Because in verse 4, uh, they decided to put that power to work. Genesis chapter 11, verse 4 says this, And they said, Come, and let us build ourselves a city. And a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. See, they had three objectives as they were operating as one. They wanted to build a city. Number two, they wanted to build a tower. And three, they wanted to make a name for themselves. That doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that, right? They want to build a city, build a tower, and make a name for themselves. Sounds like... A typical politician, right? <laughs> you want to do some good things, but you want your name to be glorified as well. But for whatever reason, God didn't want them to move forward with their plans. See, the easy conclusion is that God was not happy with them, so he stopped their work. But that's not explicitly what's in the text. See, see, it doesn't say that God was unhappy with them or displeased with their work, but we do know that whatever the reason, God decided to stop their work. And in stopping their work, God made an acknowledgement that should make us all say, wow, wow, this is, this is something big. Genesis chapter 11, verse, uh, verse 5 and 6 says this, But the Lord came down to see the city and the towers which the Son of Man built, and the Lord said, verse 6, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they began to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. This is a strong statement from God, you all. God says, because the people are one, nothing can stop them. Hmm, that's clearly some real power there, right? Real power to do some big and special things when we come together as one. Don't you want that kind of power? 
the power to do what man thinks may be impossible. Uh, don't you want that kind of power, the power that nothing uh, that, that you seek to do will be withheld from you? Don't you want that kind of power to wipe out poverty, to, to, to destroy famine, to, 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 to put injustice under your feet? Don't you want that kind of power to just throw away unemployment or underemployment or, or low pay? Don't you want that kind of power to just completely turn around the circumstances in our world, in our life? See, when they came together as one, nothing, God said, was impossible for them. See, God is letting us know here that we are better. We're stronger together. There is power when we are one. And look how God puts it at the end of their work. See, he didn't, he didn't destroy their work. He didn't cause a flood or a storm or earthquake or any kind of natural disaster or outside kind of thing stopped it. No, what he did was he looked at them and he said in Genesis chapter 2 verses 7 through 8, he said this, Come let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth and they ceased building the city. God said, I will use them to stop their work or at least slow down their work. God used their own disunity. He used their own separation to stop their work. The power was in them having one language and one speech. And because they were able to do all this, God said, don't worry about it. I got it. I, I'm not happy with this for whatever reason. So I'm going to stop this and, and, and I'm going to confuse their language. I'm going to confuse their speech. And then I'm going to separate them. God used their separation and division to disrupt their progress of, of, of their own plans. Because they did understand the power that they had in being one. They were truly unstoppable. So as God slowed down their plans by separating their oneness, he confused their language, he confused their speech, uh, and he separated them um, can't you begin to see kind of this in our own world, in our own life? You know, uh, uh, any weaknesses or stress or strain that you see in our families can many times be connected to division or drama or controversy in our families. Can't you see that on your job or your, uh, uh, your department or your team is not clicking, not connecting and therefore not producing because of division? Can't you see that in some of your bad relationships when issues arise, arguments happen? Why? Because we are not one in our church. Well, not at TFC, but in your old church, right? When issues arose, you saw because you were separated, you were divided. See, in this nation, we can't even agree that the sky is blue. We can't even agree that wearing face masks and social distancing will stop to spread the spread of this pandemic. Divided. So the question is, why did God not want them to complete their work? So again, we don't fully see that in this passage, but we can connect the why through other areas of passage in Scripture. And, 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 and what we want to do now is see what the Bible has to say about the power of one and being together. So in Genesis chapter 11, we begin, but then we're going to uh, go over to the New Testament, John chapter 17. So we get great insight into the power of one from Jesus in the book of John. In the New Testament, chapter 17, a little background here. In John chapter 17, Jesus was literally one chapter away from being betrayed by Judas. And Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure and life without him. See, Jesus knew that without him, life would be tough for the disciples. See, they had been walking with Jesus, learning from Jesus, obeying his words and instructions for some time now. And, and the, the, the sheer thought of him being gone would shatter them. They had only known community with Jesus. So Jesus knew this would be tough. So Jesus prayed a prayer on their behalf to the Father. The same prayer, I'm going to pray over us at the end of this message. But he says this. John chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus prays this prayer. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, 
that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Verse 22, the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Jesus is praying that his disciples would be one. Jesus is affirming the same principle found in Genesis that there is power in one. But see, the game changer is that the oneness that Jesus desires for us is to be one in him. See, Jesus' prayer isn't that they are one, simply one. See, the, the people in Genesis uh, chapter 11, building the city and the tower, they were one. But what they lacked is what Jesus prayed for right here. Not only is Jesus praying that they are one, he continues in John chapter 17, verse 21, by saying that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. See, God's desire for us living in community is not just that we are one, but that we are one in him. Living in community is living as one with each other and living as one with God. See, it's the difference between community and Christian community. See, as a community, we can still do good. We can still build the city and the tower in Genesis 11, but as we see, even it will only last for a certain amount of time. It will not stand if it's not one in Jesus. And Jesus says that we, when, when you are one with him, you, we are made perfect. John 17, 23 says this, they may be made perfect in one and the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. See, in that perfection, the world will point to Jesus, not to man. See, in Genesis chapter 11, there are three objectives. Build a city, build a tower, and make a name for themselves. Not bad things. Not bad things in and of itself, but their oneness in Genesis 11 was to make a name for themselves. But their oneness in John 17, 23 was to make a name for for Jesus. See, that's good, y'all. See, the difference between living in community and living in Christian community is, is the difference between you making a name for yourself and you making a name for Christ. See, a community is good, and yes, there is power in community. But a Christian community says, not only do I want to live in unity with my brothers and sisters, but I want to live under the banner of Christ, living for God, following God, walking in what God has for me. But let's stop for a moment and think about the power that a Christian community can only produce when we are one and one with God. See, Genesis 11 gets me excited because they are able to do some really big and special things. Building a big city is, is big, right? Building a tower is big. But can you imagine what we can do when we are one with each other and with God? Yeah, living out what Jesus said, love God, love our neighbor. See, when we are living uh, in Christian community, see, 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 God will let us continue on and build what he has called for us to build. See, can't nobody hold me down at that point. Ain't no stopping me now uh, in any other R&B songs that, that keeps us going uh, and, and motivated. See, living in community is a powerful way to grow our community. See, we've been watching this upcoming election in November, and at the end of the day, we want to know how my life and community will be made better by the leadership of the two parties and candidates. See, we listen to the debates to hear the plans and, and, and the thoughts from each person and party, how it will change me and my community. But let me tell you what the greatest impact on our community, on our lives, will be. It's the ability to live as one in Christian community. That's why anybody who stokes the flames of division, of separation, of dissension, uh, those people are not the solution. Let's be clear. This is not all about public policy and political issues. 
See, when we come together as one, in one language, one speech, one mind, under God, we can transform the lives of, of ourselves and our communities. There is nothing that can stop us, but it all starts in community. See, we cannot live in isolation. We cannot live outside of Christian community. We cannot live outside of the plan for God for our collective and individual lives. Community looks like oneness. The power of community is actually living in community with each other, our brethren, our sisters. And when we live in community, we now have the power to grow spiritually, relationally, and yes, we are able to grow our community. See, you want to be able to live beyond where you are in your personal life? Turn to community. You want to be able to get beyond where you are in your spiritual journey? Turn to community. You want to be able to make a difference in our larger community? Make a real difference, impact? Turn to community. There is power in one. The power to be one with God and one with each other. And as I close, I want to close with the same prayer that Jesus prayed over his disciples. John chapter 17, verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word. I pray that you believe in Jesus and I pray that you may be one as Jesus is one with the Father. As he is one with the Father, we pray that you are one with each other and that you would be one with the Father. And that in that, the glory of God will rise up in you and you will see the power that's within you to grow spiritually, to grow relationally, and to grow and make an impact in your community. God, I thank you for the power of community. I thank you that it's your idea. Thank you that lives can be changed as a result of people walking together in unity. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your commitment to us, oh God. We love you today. We honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look, if you have never uh, declared, confessed for yourself the Lord Jesus, that he lived, that he died, that he rose from the dead for our sins, for your sins, today you can make that confession. And when you make that confession, we call you saved, that you now have the ability to live life eternally with God the Father. Today, if that's something that you're doing, we want you to type the word, the, the letters TFC, to the number 797979. If you're watching on any of our social media platforms, just type the word connect in the comments and someone will reach out to you. If you don't have a church home, we would love to be your church family. We're going to be launching our new members class here in the near future. We haven't done it since we've been in the midst of, of the pandemic, but we think it's time now to open our doors back up for those who want to join the family of Transforming Faith Church. If you're interested in a church home, just continue to look out for what we'll be doing. We'll be offering our new members class here shortly. If you did not get a chance to give, you can give right now. Coming up on all our uh, 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 different platforms on your screen, you'll see how you can give. Just uh, follow those links and you'll be able to give today. Y'all, we want to uh, uh, applaud our pastor, Lisa, for the great work she's doing for our kiddos. She led in last week talking about community with our families, with our kids. And we're excited about the lesson that will be coming forth this morning. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We look forward to seeing you back here next week. Don't go anywhere, parents. Go grab your kids with Pastor Lisa for the Lit Student Ministry Lesson. We love your life. God bless you and take care.